Hey guys, Basil and Will from Grayson Hobby, and today we have a new product, and it's not a lizard. It is a wizard. Yeah. So, so it looks like the new logo or the new mascot V Sheen is some kind of lizard wearing FPV goggles. Yeah, it's a little pretty cool though. Yeah, it's, I mean, <laughs> somebody might have got a little confused when they were making the box. Like, I get confused oh, all the time. Is this a lizard or a right. wizard? Uh, screw yeah. it. So, so what we got here, Will? Um, so we got uh, the Wizard TS215. Um, this is a four cell um, freestyle or racing quad. Um, basically, it's an, the newest version of the Wizard Two, uh, Wizard Five Inch platform. So right. five inch props. So it's a two fifteen means it's five millimeters shorter in the wheelbase from the old version. But it's a stretch X. But just yes. So five millimeters lengthwise. Real quick, this is going to be a bind and fly only and a plug and play only, which means there's no ready to fly. They don't have a radio version, and the bind and fly has a receiver. It looks like it's going to be the XM Plus. Yeah, it's XM Plus, but I'll fix it. It'll be and some radio the plug and play will be no receiver. Totally just wrecking this <laughs> intro for you. So if you're new here, subscribe and watch this clown's rodeo show of all our crappy reviews. And if you are not new, be sure to hit that bell button because sometime in the near future we're going to do a flight video and we're guessing this is going to, things going to go over 100 miles an hour. Yeah, we might have to break out the old trusty radar gun with this one. Huh? Yeah. This video, we're going to break it open, break this guy open. Why not? We haven't flown it yet, so let's just take it. All right, let's break it before you fly it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I'm, uh, go over some specs on it, take it apart. Dissect it. Um, you know, a couple things I, I kind of touched base that I liked and disliked on it. So you guys, hopefully you guys can take what I say and determine if you like it or yep, not. Yeah, here it is. Before you even start, who is this intended for? This is more beginner. That is um, a beginner. It comes yeah, with the flat this is, this is beginner. Yeah. This is because it doesn't come with the radio. There's no radio options. Bind and fly or plug and play. This is probably for the guy that's, he's already worn out the wizard, he's flown the crap out of it, he's ready for something different, um, but he's not quite ready to build his own, or maybe he just doesn't have the time. You know, not everyone has time to build quads every day kind of thing. Um, you mean people have to work? Yeah, there is people with jobs out there, it's crazy. He's not necessarily wanting to build, but he's past the give me something turnkey stage. He wants to do tuning, he wants to do programming, set up smart audio, stuff like that. I think this is that that next step. Gotcha. Yeah, it looks like guys, everybody <laughs> says the wrong thing and we keep mixing it up, so eventually the memo got through, just do both of them. <laughs> Foam thing here. Wow. First things first, it does come with Cyclone 5046. That's cool. Um, comes with uh, one set of blue, one set of clear, so you have, uh, I believe it's eight props in there total, which is interesting. I have a little uh, rubber pad for the battery pad, I'm sure. A Assault gun? rifle. It looks like a gun. Um, yeah. Wait, I, <laughs> I'm guessing that's a tool of some <laughs> that's a, sort. That's a, what the, what, what, guys, is that a joke? Um, yeah, that it's uh. So we have an AK-47. Right. That looks like um. A... This does not shoot bullets. This is for display purposes what only. What the hell can that so, be for? Funny. We got some zip ties. Not quite as cool as actual wrenches. <laughs> okay. Got foam landing pads like you've seen on the older was A little uh, battery protection plate. So you strap it down with the battery. So you kind of uh, like a skid plate or just keep from damaging your batteries. We have an antenna that. Wow, okay, um, some guys at Team Black Sheep won't be too happy with that one. Uh, some prop nuts, just some standard steel prop nuts. The battery strap, some extra screws, and last but not least, the quad itself. I like the color, it's not that Yeah, this purple. is uh, not, well, it's got a little purple on it. Yeah, a little but, blue camo -ish um, So let's get this box out of the way here. All right, so first thing first, it's a 215 compared yep. to the old wizard. So if you look here, so what's that mean? Motor shaft to... So I guess you're, we're gonna measure from this motor shaft. Yeah, center of the shaft to the center of the shaft. Center of the shaft. So 215. And we're gonna get 215. So it's only five millimeters different, so it's real hard to... Overall, yeah, I would say, actually, even better. So right. if you line them up, you'll see it's narrower because of the stretched arms gotcha okay so but it's longer if you look the actual length of it is longer so it's narrower but longer. uh how much is that way uh we have a scale over here somewhere all right let's turn it on scale here and what we got so this is stock no props no battery 290 291 290. so compared to the original wizard uh 335, 335. So how thick are the arms there the arms are four millimeter thick so we have four millimeter thick arms, just like the older wizard. Um, bottom plates, three millimeter. Top plates, three millimeter. The PC board, power distribution board, and is also doubles as the flight controller. That looks to be about two millimeters. I'm not too crazy about that idea of using that all in one like that, but uh, we'll talk about that later. But let's start the outside and work our way in. Got 2306, 2450 KV motors. Okay. So you can see that there. They're really actually pretty nice, heavy. 
heavy magnets it feels like uh, nice windings uh steel shaft hollow hollow yeah um so it keeps it nice and light then the ESCs are bl heli 32 these are not bl heli s they're bl heli 32 they have a little led on board to where you can program them it does d shot 1200 which is nice so we got really nice ESCs on them i believe the ESCs are two to six cell rated um, the motor's two to six L. Now, now moving to the flight controller itself, the specs on it do say three to five. Um, so wait a minute, what was the ESCs? The ESC and motors are supposedly rated for two to six L. But the flight um, controller is flight controller is three to five. So um, so hmm. really maybe five cell, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't push the six L because chances are maybe some of the components on the board can't the, like the voltage regulators gotcha. can't. But for reliability, I'd probably honestly just stick to four cell on it. It's so. You know, for this kind of frame, right. if you're if you're building your own custom build, yeah, build a five six L quad. For something out of the box, don't bother, just fly for it. Right. right. So VTX, you go to VTX. Yeah. The VTX itself. Now this VTX is a um, smart audio capable VTX, so it has the ability to change your channels through the OSD uh, on screen your on screen display video channel, right? Yeah, your power channel, you know, right. and pit mode on and off. Okay. Um, it also has a button on the side of it to change that stuff too. But the connector is like the M M C C X M. I can't think of the name of it right now. But um, it's like the like the 220s had with the quick detach antenna. Oh yeah, okay. Now the antenna is mounted at the side. Which Wait is, a minute, you hide hiding it from us? Kind of weird. Yeah, I, I, I don't. That didn't exist. I don't, I don't know if I like that. So if you can see it, the antenna looks like an afterthought where they stuck. Well, I guess there's no room in the frame. Yeah. I guess they could have made it a little bigger and stuck their antenna. Through yeah, the instead of uh, making it look like a floss frame, but yeah. <laughs> Back to the VTX, it has pit mode, 25, 200, 500, and 800 milliwatt capable and smart milliwatt. audio. Nice. Okay. So it's a really good VTX. I mean, on, on paper, who knows what it'll actually be like in, you know, if it's noisy or it's got good filtering. How many channels does this VTX have? Yeah, um, it's a 72 channel VTX. Um, 72 it, channels? Yeah, it's got the naughty channels, so uh, use what's legal in your area. Now the middle board here is actually a DVR module. You can see there's a SD card there. Oh, cool. This is the 720p camera system, uh, recording system, kind of like if you watched our Lizard 105 video, it's a similar, um, it's not an eight true, like 1080p or 4K or anything like that, it's 720p, but with a small minimalist build like this, you're gonna have, um, you know, it's gonna be lighter than having a GoPro strap. Wait a minute. How do you mount your GoPro on this? Can you put this on there? No, well. I'm sure you could. Um, it barely fits, but how the hell are you gonna strap it down? Yeah, this is not this is not frame. This is a racing frame. This is not really a nice. oh record my freestyle flying Still. frame. Um, you could racing. always get. Would have been nice to come yeah. with this. The the whole idea from Eachin obviously is to have the onboard recording to keep it light and compact. Oh, I, I understand it. Um, I don't like it. It would have been nice to offer like a 3D printed uh, little mount that goes on there to carry some sort of GoPro. Yeah. So moving on from there. Camera. What kind of camera we got? Well, the camera on it. They claim it's a 1200 TV line CCD. It's a PAL camera. Um, it is a PAL format. Okay. So that means if you probably have some kind of camera system OSD, you got to probably. You just gotta make sure you select it's, PAL yeah, instead not, of NTSC or something right, like that. Right. Yeah. Um, so, all right, this looks like it's uh, not a typical. Factor. Yeah, I think it's TPU. It's so the, like, like the rubber printer there. Yeah, it's, it's 3D not, printed camera yeah. mount. It does offer you can loosen the screws and you can adjust the uh, camera angle. Um, the last thing at the bottom, the actual PDB that the, the uh, ESCs are going into, which I probably should have done before all that, but got distracted, is actually the flight controller and PDB in one. Um, now this is a F4 flight controller. It does have an MPU 6000 gyro, which is the one that's pretty easy to tune. You're not gonna have to worry about the vibrations and all that. Um, the little, there's a bootloader button right there. Um, the uh, It has a couple ports. It's got UART ports on, looks like in the front and back of the flight controller. So I don't think it's like missing any features really. Um, it's got an SD card slot. So it does have an onboard voltage regulator, like a three amp, uh, five volt regulator. So it's a good voltage regulator for power all the accessories. Does have a barometer. Um, What's that mean? The barometer, if you program it right, technically you can, can tell the program it to where it doesn't lose altitude. You can kind of hold okay. it like an angle mode. Okay. The feature is cool. Uh, you That's can also put on OSD. Right? It, it, it's something you can mess with, yeah. but it's not really something you're going to use for like what this is intended for. Right. Uh, it's more that just the package, their component package they're using has a barometer, which is just an extra feature to play with. Okay. It's really almost impossible to probably see in the video here. But one thing I want to point out is the actual gyro is on a um, silicone pad, like a double sided silicone pad. Um, so the flight, con or not the flight controller is hard mounted to the frame, but the actual gyro assembly is soft mounted. So a lot of people are going to ask, why is the flight controller not soft mounted? It actually, the flight controller is not, but the gyro is. One thing I don't, this is something I can kind of see this is going to be a problem. The um, 
battery wires here, they're 16 gauge. I would have preferred 14, but 16 gauge on here. The biggest thing is with the under mounted battery, if you don't strap that sucker good down good and you eject the battery and pull the cords, I'm just worried that this is gonna pull off the uh, solder pad's gonna pull off and then you're gonna have to go and replace the entire flight controller, PDB combo, resolder, everything, all the ESCs to it. Um, I kinda think there could've been a better way to do that one. So this is an XM Plus receiver. Uh, if you watched our Oxbill video talking about the receiver install, you can see I just soldered one of the header pins to it. Um, if you do get a plug and play model or whatever, um, I'm essentially thinking that's how they're gonna install it, but it might come pre just soldered to it if I'm plug and play. Uh, in this case, when I go to test it, that's how I'm gonna set it up. So I'm kinda looking forward to flying this actually. It's got a lot of features. The motors feel really coggy. I, I, I like that. I think they're gonna be pretty so strong. Are I guess they're, are they clockwise, counterclockwise motors? Actually, that's oh, it does say clockwise. Now go yeah. this guy, Mister that out. guy. Yeah. Okay. But you can see how clicky that you know the cog even yeah. is. It's pretty strong magnets in it. So CW. With this cable running here, I think there's probably maybe a better way to run this somewhere. Uh, the Which USB. Cable? The, this VTX okay. antenna cable um, to get to the V uh, the USB port. Um, you gotta plug it in, and a lot of USB cords are kind of bulky, so what's gonna happen is you're, this is gonna put pressure on the side of the USB port. I just have a feeling people are gonna be breaking that VTX, or I'm not, sorry, not the USB VTX, port. the USB port off. Yeah. Alright, so let's put some power to it, do it. Alright, so, first thing, <laughs> I love the little, uh, motorcycle. motorcycle. I love the DVR system. It's Welcome to the two motorcycles. Yeah. It's coming with Betaflight 320. That's not bad. And it's, uh, Omnibus with SD. Okay, so you said one one flight mode. Yeah, it, it only had one flight mode. It's running stock stock beta flight pids. Basically, it looks like a stock three. It probably fly. should fly okay with the stock pids, but um, we definitely know we can tune up. All right, let's let's open that bad boy up. Let's see how hard this thing really is to work on. So, so one screw down there. One screw here. Looks like the camera tower screws. Take it up. So um, wow. Okay. Unplug the camera. So that. Assembly, and we can get to, let's get this antenna out of the way here. So the actual design, and oh, actually now we can get a good look at that uh, flight controller. Now that wire, you'd probably, you know, if you're working on it, you probably wanna make sure that this wiring right here is oh, not okay. resting, this wire. Okay. Probably not resting on the, the, the gyro plate, but you can see it's a, see me moving right there? It's a little soft mounted plate. Okay. Here's up here, so this is actually the barometer component here. Um, so that's actually on the board, and then the flight controller, the gyro, is what's uh, soft mounted. So it's beeper. The buzzer. Okay. Right there. You got the boot button there. Take this. Let's go. Actually, let's let's just take this thing apart. Why not? We haven't flown it yet, so let's just take it. Apart. Right. Let's break it before you fly it. Exactly. I'd say for maintenance, working on it. That, this is actually kind of a nice feature because it's not hard to work on. It's so there we go. Now we officially know what VTX it is. Eashin 870TX. 72 channel, so it's got the diagram for all the wiring and all that. So if we do want to rewire and bypass this uh, SD card thing, so let's just go ahead and take this out too. Let's see what we got. I know everybody wants to see what the guts of these things are, so here we go. Oh, look at that sucker. So the receiver, you'll see the your. Uh, oh, this is actually this is nice, guys. Check this out. All right, so this is our UART one port here, um, where the receiver's pre-installed or the cable. Um, this does feature a. 3 volt or 5 volt selection. So if you unbridge it, just like an omnibus, just like what uh, we saw in the um, Wizard 220S and all that, where they had the little bridge pad, it's got the exact same thing going on here. So what are you saying? So you can desolder this 5 volt and solder over the 3. Now I'd have to test this to verify 100%, but based off the diagram that it listed, and I don't know why they'd showed otherwise, it's got the Three pads there. The center pad is bridged to the five volt. Okay. If you desolder that and clean it off, and then move it to the three volt, then that would give three volt power for like a Spectrum satellite. Okay. So this this quad is going to be pretty easy to run either Spectrum or um, Free Sky or Fly Sky. Uh, because it's F4, is that a hardware inverted inverted port or not? Um, I'll mess around with that, but that is a five volt, three volt selector. Ideally, I think that's what they were going for there. On this side here, this is the cable that went to the VTX. So you have a five volt. So we are running a five volt VTX currently. Um, oh, wait a minute. All right, so this shows us on five volt, which um, kind of surprised because the VTX has seven to 24 input. So I'll have to double check. That might've been just a screen print error. Maybe that's a, like nine volts or something like that. Um, screen print on the board. 
Yes, potential, we might have to fix something down the road there. We'll get into that later. You got a current sensor, some regular soft mount. Now the gyro, one thing, just like you're starting to see a lot of stuff is the gyro is replaceable. So, it, you know, worst case scenario, if you damage the gyro somehow, you can replace it. Most times I'm crashing, I'm breaking stuff. Yeah, okay. chances are that's not gonna be the part yeah, that breaks I don't think I'm gonna hit a stick, it's gonna hit that. <laughs> yeah, so guys, here's the, uh, here's the guts of the IDC DVR 638. So if anybody has information linking to DVR 638, if you've seen that in other stuff before, let us know. So here's the top side, you got a little audio pickup there. And it's the Eosheen 870TX. The camera, we'll look at the back side, it just says top, it's just literally a generic. I wanna say this is like an 1177. Um, if it's a CCD, I'm I'm guessing it's probably just your standard 1177. However, it does have the update style back plate like you're finding on the run cams and fox ears and all that. Hey, so what do you think about it? Um, well, I like the motors. They they seem like they're gonna be. If it's anything like the Diatone, I wouldn't doubt this thing's a hundred mile an hour quad on four cell. Right, because it got the um, same motors, right? It, same size. Motors? It weighs less, uh, a hair less, I think. Um, same size motors, four cell capable. The uh, 40 MPSCs are nice. Now, I wasn't crazy about the metal plates touching up on the capacitors here. Uh, I kind of hope they, uh, you know, start moving those back because I just don't know if that's going to short anything or not. ESCs, they're nice. They're BL Heli 32, so it's D-Shot 1200. Should make tuning pretty easy because the ESCs are very fast. 4K flight controller, so you can run 8K, 8K all day long. Not crazy about the DVR thing. I well, we, we I think, just had bad luck I, before other, yeah, other manufacturers. I think I wish they would have just ditched that put a separate flight controller in there and made a GoPro mount for it still. Now most people that are flying this kind of stuff, they want GoPro footage. They want camera, it's CCD. It is a 2.8 lens, I forgot to mention that earlier. Kind of a narrow field of view. You can always buy an aftermarket lens. That's not, you know, oh, you can get camera. a GoPro, or I'm sorry, run cam lens. Like the adjustable mount to where you just loosen two screws and adjust it, I, that's nice. VTX, uh, smart audio VTX is great. I love the smart audio feature versus having to play with the buttons and find the channel and all that. That's, that's great. Flight controller. That, that's stupid, I, I'm sorry. That was the all-in-one thing, I hate that. That was years ago when we were doing that stuff. Flight controllers are always changing. I think that is gonna um, give the quad more of a lifespan than anything. Because who knows, we might have F12 flight controllers next week, I don't know. But however, it looks like it wouldn't be hard for them to make a carbon plate that you could buy a plate maybe and then change it to standard flight controller. Antenna thing, it works. Um, the props are gonna be there realistically. Yeah, you'll probably hit if you tumble a lot, you'll probably break it off. Um, I, I think they should have ran uh, kind of like the Diatone did, you know, ch maybe change this bracket to a square with a hole down and run the antenna out the bottom or outside or whatever. I mean, this is a hell of a lot more quad than I started with kind of thing. Yeah. So that that's one thing I always try to take a step back and look at it. It's like, you know, a year ago, this was not something you would find, especially, you know, the price point of these things are not that high anymore. Big bang for the buck, but uh, don't expect per perfection with this one. I, I, I definitely see a couple shortcomings on. There is the opening unboxing of the new Wizard TS215. I can't wait to see this guy fly. It looks like he's pretty fast. I think this is going to be a fun quad. Uh, I think it's going to be a fast quad. Um, it's loaded with a lot of the newer stuff, so it should make it a pretty good flyer. Yep. Um, with the right electronics, you could pretty much make a turd fly. So right, um, uh, we've made bricks fly before with airplanes. 